Well, hello, and welcome to Complete Spectral Layers 12. This is going to be a little bit different approach to a video because this is a little bit different piece of software. This is an AI-assisted spectral editing platform. This is remarkable, and this is remarkably straightforward. And this is a brownie, and also a damn strange way to start a video. This is a chocolate brownie. My wife makes them. They're really good. This brownie is mixed. This brownie is completely baked. And this brownie is actually about half gone because I've started this video about six different times. And if you brought this brownie to me and said, Walt, that's a good brownie, but you know what? I'm allergic to eggs. Would you mind taking the eggs out of that for me? And while you're in there, um, maybe just dial back the salt a little bit. I would tell you that you've been eating too many of another type of brownie because that's crazy. In the same way that if you brought me this, which if you haven't seen before, this is a record, like a record, 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 you know, squished down petroleum products with bumps in it that make sound. And, and you said, hey, I love that, but could we dial back the drums and maybe pull out the guitar? I would say, no, that's not, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. If you want a different tasting brownie or a different sounding record, you need to go back and do it again because they're they're done. It's in the pan. It's on the platter. It's, it's finished. You can't do that until now. But that's exactly what Spectral Layers allows you to do. I mean, that's one of its many party tricks, but I'm not kidding. You can, you can take the eggs back out of the cake with this thing. It's, it's remarkable. Spectral editing has been around for six years, but not to this level of, of application. It's, it's remarkable. So, um, before we go any further, full disclosure, this, this is the boring chapter because we're going to talk about what this is, how we got here, where it came from, and then all the ticky-tack stuff about setup and licensing and stuff like that. So if you've already got that under your hands or you don't care about that stuff and you want to just get to the fun stuff, uh, see in Chapter 2. Just head on down the road. Chapter 2 is where the fun begins. This is the boring stuff. Okay, are they gone? All right, now that everybody with impulse control issues has left the room... Um, I would say that the other thing about this that's concerning me is I think I'm putting myself out of business. I've said for years, if software manufacturers uh, just made their programs easier to use and understand, you wouldn't need me. Right? I mean, you've never watched a tutorial for a toaster, and this one's alarmingly close to that. The presets work great right out of the box. The controls are easy to understand. The interface is very intuitive. Uh, thankfully, they sort of stepped on some rakes with like the setup and licensing things and some weird nomenclature in the menus. So I've got a job for another summer. But this thing started as part of WaveLab. I was, I think, first introduced six or seven years ago. And uh, the, the history there is significant because there are several... WaveLab for years was Windows only. Obviously, this is a Mac environment. I'm assuming most of you are civilized humans and use Macintosh or Apple uh, platforms. So there are some Windows hangovers that are kind of glitchy with this thing. For one thing, if you close the red ball in the corner, it shuts the entire application down. Usually in the iOS, if you if you red ball a window, you know the application keeps running, but the the window just disappears. If you if you red ball this, the whole thing's going away, and you got to reboot. So just be aware of that. That's one of several little odd Windows hangover issues they've got. Um, but as part of a a trend that Steinberg has been going through where they'll, they'll invent one of these behemoth mothership programs like Nuendo or Cubase. And then in the subsequent years, they'll pull out little gems and sell those on the side as individual modules, which is more or less what this is. You can get this same capability or most of it in WaveLab for $900, or you can get this for 99 bucks, which is incredible. And they've done that with some other plugins and reverbs and stuff from Cubase and so on. So it's just another in a long series of Steinberg's, I guess, marketing approach. But if you're already a WaveLab person, look good and hard at your spectral editing capabilities in there uh, before you pull the trigger on buying this. I think some of the modules are easier to use. The workflow is easier for, for 90 bucks. How wrong can you go? But just just be aware, there's, there's going to be a lot of overlap between WaveLab and this. Um, we talked about some of the Windows stuff. I would say the, the biggest, the only issues that we've run into so far are in the setup uh, arena. There is some setup stuff that's a little bit goofy. Um, if you're a legacy Steinberg user, you know, forever we had the e-licensor. 
that's all gone now. It's been replaced by the download assistant and the activation assistant. And those can get a little glitchy because this they don't say it up front, but this is a two-stage process. You have to download it as one activity and then sort of take a pause and then install and activate as a second activity. And even if you've done that or after you do that, assuming you have a valid license, the first time you start it, it's going to wake up stupid and say, there's no license here and it's wrong. Put it to sleep, turn it off, turn it back on again. It'll work fine. Again, gosh, do you think it started as a Windows product years ago? Uh, so that that um, that process is a little glitchy. Once you're in here, the other thing that I think is going to be um, irritating would probably be the best word. If you look at the menus that we have here, what you don't see is anything that says uh, audio or studio or setup. Uh, so it's not immediately obvious where you would go to begin connecting your sound card and configuring your speaker outputs and monitors and stuff. Of all places, they decided to park that under preferences. So if you drop down the spectral layers menu and go to preferences, here you find all of that stuff. And you've got five tabs across the top. The first one is device. And for the purposes of initial setup, that's where all of your required stuff lives. So your core audio, your input output stuff, all of your devices and speaker settings. Um, under your type, which is really your audio, really your audio interface, but they call it type. It's more on that in a second. Um, you're going to find several things in here. Most likely this spectral layers bridge is going to be really inviting. That's something that we're going to use on down the road. When we look at how to open this as an extension from within Cubase or within Nuendo. And you could probably use it as an extension within WaveLab, but I honestly haven't tried that because it's redundant. But anyway, core audio is probably what you're going to want. But the point is that none of this stuff would normally appear under a preferences menu. If you go to system, it's all of this other stuff about how it interfaces with the hard drive, which again seems backwards. And the most irritating of the three is the second tab, interface. And before I click this, what do you think you would find on an interface tab in an audio editing program? Right, whatever you just said is incorrect because it has nothing to do with the audio interface at all. It's this stuff. It's it's the human machine interface, the brightness, the colors, the VU meter gradients, all of this other visual like look and feel stuff. Why? Anyway, I'm I'm just gonna lay that off to the world of Windows and say that's a hangover too. But when you're trying to pick through this on your own, it's gonna piss you off most likely. All right. Honestly, that's that's really it. That's the best I could do for the coefficient of BS on this thing. It's It really is a straightforward program. It's a lot of fun. And it, some of the stuff it does is just absolutely jaw dropping. And we're going to drop your jaw in the next chapter. We're going to get right into the unmixed song feature, which is brilliant. So I will see you back here in a moment.